Hey guys, it's JT Khan, and uh, I thought tonight I might take a little bit of time and uh, introduce uh, everybody to this amazing game I found about a month and a half ago. It's uh, called Kerbal Space Program. It's uh, put out by Squad. Um, it's actually still in beta right now, but if you go to their site, kerbalspaceprogram.com, and pre-order the game, you can actually play it through the development cycle. So, you know, every about month and a half or so, they bring out a new update, uh, they... Uh, fix bugs, they introduce new uh, features to the game, new parts, new planets, uh, you name it. And you get to basically experience that uh, as you go. Uh, on top of that, it's also got an incredible modding community to it that are constantly making mods. They're making parts, uh, they're putting uh, new features into the game themselves, and, and hopefully at some point we'll get a chance to uh, check all that out. But uh, right now I'm just running the base game. Uh, Today they actually released a new update with some bug fixes. So this is version point one eight point four. This was a great little Valentine's Day present from the guys. Uh, so uh, let's get into it. Basically, uh, we are right now. The screen is sitting on the moon, but off in the distance you can see the planet Kerbin, our home planet. Uh, right in front of us is a shiny example of a Kerbal, uh, who are the inhabitants of that planet, and we're going to be charged with basically designing and running their fledgling space program. Uh, the game's got a couple of different modes to it. Uh, there's basically the assembly part of it where you have a set of parts that you can uh, use to build any rocket or space plane or ship or anything you want to put together. Uh, and then you launch that uh, and you put together uh, your own missions. Uh, you can go to the moon. There's actually a couple of different moons. Uh, that orbit this planet. You can go to other planets and their moons. Uh, you can put up satellites. You can do landings. I, really, anything you want to do. Uh, just really, really good fun. So uh, let's get started. I think uh, tonight I'm just going to go kind of just over how the game looks and the different parts of it, and then we'll put together a real simple rocket, uh, throw a real basic satellite into space, and uh, we're going to go from there. So uh, let's start one up. I just actually... Uh, installed this not too long ago. So we're going to start a new uh, game. Uh, right now it shows sandbox but the and career. The career mode has not been implemented yet. Uh, they've indicated it will be uh, at some point down the line, but right now it's just sandbox. We can do whatever we want. So uh, we're going to start our new spaceport. The Jebediah Kerman Space Center. And uh, Get rid of all that. And if um, if you don't know who Jebediah Kerman is, I would look that little Kerbal up online. Uh, basically, if you take Han Solo and Indiana Jones and Captain Mal, throw them into one, he is the fiercest space traveler of all time. You cannot panic this guy. He's amazing. I'm sure we'll see him later. But um, we're going to go down and visit our space center now. This is our space center. There's several different pieces to it. Uh, we've got our space tracking center. This is where we can check out any of our flights that are going on. We can take a look at the different planets and the stars, or I'm sorry, star. Uh, right now, there's only one. Uh, here is the vehicle assembly building. This is where we're going to put together rockets or anything that's launched uh, through the vertical launch pad, which is located right here, connected to it. Uh, this is our space plane hangar, where we can put uh, together space planes uh, or actually atmospheric planes, too. You can fly around the planet if you want. And that is connected to um, to this runway right here. So this is our space center. Uh, we uh, can check out here the tracking center, basically our solar system. So let's do that real quick. This is our planet, Kerbin. Uh, our space center is located right, I believe, right around here. Uh, we'll, we'll see it once we launch. There will be some parts left over right there. Uh, it is orbited by the moon over here, which is uh, on an equator equatorial uh, orbit, so it's right flat with the equator. So it's actually one of the easiest things to get to in the game once you get your orbits and stuff taken care of. Uh, there's a second uh, orbiting body here, Minmus, that's at a, actually at a, a tilted inclination, so it's a little bit more of a challenge, but... Uh, if we zoom out, we can see that actually we're just one of many planets in the solar system. And uh, there's 
kind of planets that represent our own, really. Uh, this is Duna, which is kind of the uh, the Mars of the game, if you will. And, and typically speaking, I think that's usually the next big, the next planet people usually go for, and, and probably what we'll do too. But uh, each of these planets have uh, typically their own uh, set of moons, and um, it really presents just innumerable challenges at this point. And uh, during a dev uh, live stream, they mentioned that they're going to be adding several new solar systems as well, and eventually a procedurally generated set of solar systems. So, you know, the replay value just uh, keeps increasing as, it, as time goes. Basically, uh, where we can go, sky is literally the limit. Uh, so I think uh, what we'll do real quick, uh, now that we've kind of checked that out, is, is uh, we will build a real simple rocket, uh, shoot our first unmanned satellite into orbit, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, like I said, right now I'm using the just the stock version, uh, but as we go, I would really like to uh, really like to focus on some of the the greater mods out there that really just turn this thing on its head and and make it even more amazing. Uh, so we're going to go into the vehicle assembly building. You can see all these little kerbals hard at work, um, kind of wandering around in circles. They look important. All right, so uh, basically this uh, is the assembly page or window uh, tab where we basically lay out our parts, lay out our stages, how the uh, what order the stages go in. Um, there's another tab for setting action groups together, which uh, we won't even bother with now because I don't truly understand it. And that would just be embarrassing. Uh, but basically, you can set up. Um, different uh, keystrokes will do different things. For instance, you can um, you can set a parachute to go off at the same time that you eject part of a pod. You can link it all together into one, uh, one, one keystroke, or you can turn on different lights with different keystrokes, etc. Um, with that, you also have uh, up here, you can start a new uh, rocket from scratch at any point. You can load up uh, ships that you have uh, saved or the ones that are listed as stock or ones that are actually uh, that you've either imported into the game or are already there. Um, you can save with the next button and then the next one is going to the launch pad. So uh, let's do that. Over here on the left side um, typically is where we can pick our parts and right now the first thing we have to do before we do anything is to pick the command pod. And that can go anywhere from uh, cockpits to capsules to unmanned probes. And uh, the probes are basically what we're going to use right now. So we're going to use the uh, State Putnik Mark II. And uh, there it is right there in all of its round glory. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click that, use my mouse wheel, and I'm going to scroll it up a bunch because we're going to put some pieces underneath it. So we're going to put it up there. So now we've got free reign of this. Uh, of the parts panels over here, and it is broken up into several different tabs. You have the pod... Uh, <laughs> music is amazing. <laughs> you have different tabs uh, that basically will organize those parts for you. So we've got the pods, which is what we were just in, the uh, propulsion, which mainly deals with fuel tanks and engines, rocket engines. Uh, we have the control tab, uh, which has our RCS thrusters, uh, our stability um, pieces, etc. Uh, right now there's just a few in there. Uh, that list is growing and once we get some mods uh, in there that will jump up significantly. Structural, which deals with our decouplers that splits our stages apart. Um, different uh, fairings, adapters, uh, strut pieces, which will come in handy when we decide we're going to start building a station, which will happen eventually. Uh, the aerodynamic tab, which is mainly used when you're building the space planes, but there are some winglets that you can attach to your rocket uh, and that such. Uh, the utility tab, uh, this tab has uh, our 
batteries, docking ports, ladders, landing struts, parachutes, solar panels, all that kind of stuff. And the last one is the science tab, uh, which doesn't do a whole lot at this point. Uh, there are some mods out there that really make some use uh, and actually add quite a few parts to as well. But we've got an accelerometer, a gravity detector, a barometer, a thermometer, and, and we'll use that a bit more uh, later on. But um, underneath it, we also have uh, a couple of different buttons. We have symmetry mode. Uh, basically, it allows you to place one part on the rocket, or if you click it, you can uh, place multiple parts spaced evenly apart. So uh, we'll definitely be using that pretty soon. And next to it is the angle snap. Uh, if it's left like this, you can place a part anywhere um, on your rocket. rocket. If you put the angle snap, it'll put it at like, uh, you know, I want to say it's every like 30 degrees or something like that. I'm, I'm probably wrong on that, but that's all right. So uh, I typically would use that and uh, let's get this thing started. So we've got our command pod, which is right now an unmanned probe. And uh, we'll start adding pieces underneath it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a decoupler because in the end, we just want it floating around by itself and this will separate it from the from the rocket so we're gonna put that underneath and as you can see when you pick a piece up it has these uh, circular bubbles or nodes that basically shows you where you can attach it to different parts there's a, a bubble underneath this part and as you can see it kind of snaps to it so looking good there uh, let's see underneath that we are going to put an adapter in like that, which is going to allow us to use a little bigger parts. And with that, we are going to put a an SAS in, an advanced SAS, and basically this stands for Stability Augmentation System, and it kind of helps keep your rocket a little steadier, kind of let you hold course a little bit. Um, just makes your flight a little easier. And so with that in, we are going to add an RCS fuel tank. RCS is reaction control system, I believe. Uh, but basically the little thrusters uh, that we put on that uh, allow us to control the rocket which we're going to do right now. Here's the RCS thruster block. We're going to attach that to the RCS fuel tank. And we're going to use that symmetry mode I was just talking about. I want to put four of these guys on here spaced evenly apart. So down here in the symmetry mode, I'm going to set that to four. So there's going to be four spaced evenly apart. And you see they kind of snap to and they're all even. So we're going to put those guys right about there. All right, looking good. I'm also going to want to put some batteries on this because uh, if we don't, it's not going to last a full orbit. Uh, now there's uh, an energy system that uh, we got to watch out for, and uh, we need to make sure that uh, the control system has juice all the time. So uh, there we go with that. Now that we've got the, basically the RCS and the control systems in place, we're going to want to add a fuel tank and a rocket to complete this upper stage. So we're going to go to propulsion. And uh, I think we'll use this smaller fuel tank here. And we'll use the LVT-30 uh, engine. And when you mouse over these parts, it gives you a, a uh, pretty funny description of uh, there's a lot of humor in this game uh, it'll give you a description but it'll also list some important uh, things like the engine power uh, ISP level which is basically the uh, amount of thrust at sea level and the amount of thrust in a vacuum and it'll also tell you what kind of propellants that it uses and how much it uses um, uh, see 215 we'll use this guy why not? So that's basically going to be the upper stage. 
uh, once we get kind of out of the atmosphere, this is going to be used to boost us into orbit and then circularize our orbit before this all detaches and leaves this guy by himself. Uh, so now that we've completed this stage, we are going to want to put another decoupler on so that we can uh, detach the next stage. And it automatically puts a uh, like a fairing or a housing on here, um, which is a great addition. It didn't used to when I first started playing, and you really had to put some some struts up to keep it uh, from all falling apart. So that is great. Uh, now that we've got this, we're ready to do our uh, our main stage, our liftoff stage, and I'm going to put another adapter on so we can use even bigger parts. Um, zoom out a bit here and underneath this for the main stage we're gonna put this uh, Rocco Max jumbo fuel tank in right underneath right there and it looks a bit like the uh, the fuel tank that the shuttle used to use the, the main fuel tank so there we are right there I am gonna put a larger engine underneath it the uh, the mainsail liquid engine has a max power of 1500 it uses liquid fuel and oxidizer uh, it just sounds like a beast so let's use it I'm gonna pop that underneath there and um, just in playing in the past and I haven't played a whole lot so really uh, we're kind of gonna be learning a bit together but uh, in building a rocket like this it's it's a little bit unstable with just these RCS thrusters up at the top so I'm gonna add another set at the bottom uh, I didn't used to, but um, I'm going to try it out and see if it if it'll help any. So I'm just going to put another set of thrusters down here, kind of to aid it on its way. So now that we've got uh, this, this is going to basically be our rocket. Uh, what I am going to add are these separatron separatrons, um, which are basically uh, little rockets that when a stage separates it kind of gives it a little kick backwards so that uh, it doesn't get caught um, when the second engine ignites it's not gonna blow up the next piece so these guys we're gonna put them right there they're just gonna give us a bit of a bit of a kick back to help separate the stages a little better uh, it is a good point right now to uh, basically show you the the staging area or the staging bar here on the right side and this basically shows you how each piece will fire up in line and uh, now that we've added these separatrons they're added at the bottom which is not where we want them at this point when we launch these things are going to go off first we don't want that we want it basically to go off when this thing separates to help kick it back so we're going to click this and uh, as you notice this will highlight each part as you go as you uh, hover over it so we want it to go with the decoupler up here so that these all basically fire at the same time. And we have our main mainsail engine here is the guy that fires first. So we're going to move this down just a tad. Eh, that's all right. Um, now we need to put, uh, put the launch stability uh, guys up. And uh, we're not going to want four of those. We, can, we only need two. So we're going to set the uh, symmetry mode to two, keep it at the angle snap, and uh, we're going to put these guys right about there. And that's going to hold the rocket in place for us. And uh, I don't know, I think we're almost good to go. One thing that we need to make sure that we set is these um, stability enhancers. Basically what's going to happen when we launch, these arms are going to drop so it'll, it'll take off. We don't. We basically want these in the same stage as our engine, so that when the engine fires, they drop. Otherwise, what happens is the arms drop, the rocket falls, and everything blows up. So I think for our, our first unmanned probe, this this may do it. I'm hoping. Otherwise, this is it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, so we're going to go up here and rename it. We're going to name this. Uh, we're just going to call it Probe Test 1A, because that sounds official, and I'm all about that. Uh, up here is our Save button, so we can go back and, and alter this later or reload it if we want to do more flights with it or whatever. 
off in the distance, you can see that vertical launcher. And um, that's where we're going to go next. So we're going to go to the launch. All right, the world is rendering. The physics engine is going to kick in here in a minute. We're going to settle in. Looking good. So our rocket's sitting on the pad. As you can uh, see, the rest of the uh, rest of the spaceports over there in the distance. So <clears throat> what's going to happen is, is I'm going to turn on the SAS to keep us basically uh, steady as we can go. Uh, I'm going to put the throttle up to 100%, and then I'm going to hit my space bar, which is basically going to be uh, the command to launch. There's a few things on the basically on the mission uh, window, as I call it, that we're on now. Uh, we've got our staging order here on the, on the left that we were just dealing with. Up on the uh, upper left-hand corner, we have our time controls. We have our MET, which is Mission Elapsed Time. And right in the middle here, we have our navigational ball, and this basically shows us where we're oriented, what direction we're pointing in. Uh, it'll also give us our surface and our orbital speeds. And our heading, it will also show us what our throttle setting is and, uh, and our g-forces. Uh, so that's going to be kind of important. Up in the upper right hand corner shows our resources which is basically electricity and fuel, um, RCS uh, mono propellant, uh, all that kind of jazz. So we can keep track of that stuff up there. At the very top we have um, our altitude listed in meters. Uh, atmospheric density is this little uh, this little gadget right here. Uh, this gauge shows our vertical speed, either up or down. And uh, there's buttons here for lights and gears and brakes, which we don't have any need for right now. We we do not want brakes. Uh, and if something should go terribly wrong, which actually is quite likely, there is also an abort button right here that we can use. But um, okay. Hopefully, hopefully won't we need it. Um, if you hit your M button, you'll go to your map, and uh, this is centered on us. So there we are in, uh, on the launch pad. As we launch, uh, it's going to show our trajectory, and uh, that trajectory is going to uh, list our uh, apoapsis, uh, which is the highest point of our orbit. Uh, eventually, when we circular, circularize, it'll show our periapsis, which is going to be the lowest port of our orbit. And uh, with the map mode, we will be able to uh, basically plan our maneuvers and set our orbit up. So I'm going to also bring our navigational ball up in that window as well. So I think we're good to go. Uh, we're going to launch basically straight up uh, to cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere. When we hit about uh, 10 kilometers or so, we're going to start tilting over to the side. Um, and that's basically what's called a gravity turn. And we're going to change uh, our straight vertical speed to more of a horizontal speed. So as we tilt over, we're going to start building up speed to the side. And uh, the idea is, is we basically want to build up enough speed that we match the curvature of of the planet we don't we're falling but we never actually are falling down fast enough that we enter the atmosphere we're just going to keep going around and around which is you know the basis of an orbit so uh let's do that let's go into space so i'm gonna hit t to access my sas system i am going to bring my throttle up to 100 percent check my staging one more time to make sure we're not going to hopefully explode on the pad and uh once we launch with this engine, uh, it's going to start overheating at full power pretty quick. So once we're up a bit, we're going to bring that throttle back to make sure that that engine doesn't explode on us. So you'll kind of see me doing that. It happens a little fast if I'm rambling and not paying attention. So, all right, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, we're going to do this in three, two, one, launch. And there we are. Arms dropped, released us. We are going. And uh, we're a little wobbly. Look at that. Kind of like... It's like launching a Twizzler into space. There's that overheat coming, so I'm going to drop our throttle down a bit. There's the overheating. I'm going to drop it a bit more, as you can see right there, our throttle power. And uh, that's going to even that out a bit. We're already at four kilometers. Uh, there we are. The SAS is kind of helping keep us 
straight, we've got a gimbling engine, so it's going to turn, you know, turn in different directions to keep us going. So we're going to prepare for that gravity turn already. We are at eight kilometers. So I'm going to activate the RCS thrusters. I'm going to deactivate the SAS, and I'm going to tilt us over a bit, a little wild-like, until we get to about 45 degrees there. I'm going to hit the SAS again to lock us into place. And you can see our speed, uh, horizontal speed, is starting to kick up. And if we go to the map, you can already see our highest point of the orbit is already going up pretty good. Liquid fuel is about to run out, so this engine is going to cut out right there. We are going to disengage that. You can see the separatrons kick on. Kicking that out, we're going to fire this engine up. I am going to drop our attitude a bit more, about like that. And uh, now we're going to go to the map. We're, uh, we're going to kick off at about 200 kilometers. I have just kicked our engines off. That happened a lot quicker than I expected it to. Uh, right now, our highest point of the orbit is going to be um, its shrinking a bit because we're in the atmosphere, but it's going to be about 204 kilometers. So that's all right. You can see we're kind of rising fairly quickly, actually, out of the atmosphere. If we look up here, we are out of the atmosphere after about 70 kilometers or so. So we've got a couple of minutes uh, until we hit... Uh, about f a little less than four and a half minutes before we hit this AAP AOAPSIS. And what's going to happen is, is when we hit that highest point, we're going to burn forward in what's called a prograde, mo prograde motion. And uh, what that's going to do is, on the opposite side of the planet, that's going to raise our, or our orbit. Uh, and that's basically how we will do maneuvers. If we want to raise our orbit, we're going to burn forward in prograde at the opposite side of the planet. And if we want to drop our orbit, we're going to burn what's called retrograde. We're going to burn backwards or slow down, and that's going to lower the orbit on the opposite side of the planet that we're at when we do the burn. Um, so that's what we're going to set up now. Um, the latest big update introduced a maneuver node system, uh, which I am still kind of learning, but basically it allows us to plan our maneuvers in advance. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to plan our circulariza circularization burn. And... Um, at our uh, apoapsis, we're going to click here, we're going to add a maneuver, and then we're going to have these maneuver uh, controls pop up. And uh, real quick, basically what it does is, is these green ones uh, will set up a prograde or a retrograde burn, so basically raise or lower our, our orbit. Uh, we can burn towards or away from the planet with these guys, and the purple ones are normal and anti-normal. Basically what that does is it controls the tilt of our orbit or the uh, inclination compared to the equator. Uh, and it looks like we're not really going to have to worry about that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to plan our burn. So we're going prograde, which is this guy right here. This is the prograde symbol, which also matches the prograde symbol on our uh, navigational ball right there. So we're going to pull this forward, and you can see this dotted line, which is basically the planned orbit after we're done with the burn. So I'm going to pull this out and pretty soon we're going to see the PE symbol which is our periapsis. It's the low point of our orbit and we're going to bring that up pretty close to 200. Pull that up here fairly quickly because I think it's coming up here. 200. So our orbit right now planned will be 207 uh, kilometers by 201 kilometers. That's not it's not too bad, so it, that works. So this is our first launch. Uh, hopefully the government's not expecting anything close to rocket science from us. So uh, what this does, what this did was, it added another uh, indicator on our ball, this blue guy, and that is basically going to uh, position we need to be pointed at at the time of our burn, our planned burn. So what I'm going to do is deactivate uh, the SAS our RCS thrusters to uh, line up here, right about there. I'm going to activate the SAS to hold that position. And what's happening is, if you notice, this uh, indicator is actually coming in line with our uh, prograde uh, symbol because basically when we're 
space and floor break, we're going to fire our engine. I had also added two new uh, things to our um, indicator here. We've got how much uh, velocity we need to gain, 782.1 meters a second, uh, how long we're going to burn, uh, and how long until we reach our node, which is where we're going to burn. Uh, so as we burn, uh, this graph and uh, this, in this number is going to decrease until we've got the velocity we need. Uh, so we've got 30 seconds to uh, to the node, so I'm going to gonna get ready for this here. I'm going to go ahead and burn at the 14 second mark. Uh, so we finished our burn when we reached the node. And uh, I'll talk about the the big controversy when after that happens. So ready for burn and go. That's uh, our velocity needed is decreasing. We're almost meeting, meeting it. Cut off in three, two, one, and cut off. Oh, no, 10.3 meters short. Uh, as you can see, it's gonna burn just a tad more. Oops, a little overzealous there. Uh, that was our circularization burn. So I'm going to kill this maneuver here. And uh, now this blue line is our current orbit. And as you can see, it's all the way around the planet. So uh, we're not in any danger of crashing now. Our orbit is 212 kilometers by 198 kilometers. So uh, a little bit off, but uh, fairly circle, circular, not too bad. Uh, but we're in a stable orbit now, and that's what counts. So uh, despite having a flying Twizzler, uh, we actually managed to get up into space. So uh, I was going to talk real quickly about, uh, I know a lot of questions come up when we set up a maneuver burn, when you actually make the burn. And there's two different schools uh, of thought here. And, and one is uh, that I've always been used to. I've played uh, another simulator called Orbiter. Uh, for years and the idea there is to split your burn up you burn um, basically if you have a 14 second burn you burn seven seconds before your node and then seven seconds after the node you know you put it right in the middle um, and there's another uh, school of thought that you basically start burning uh, however many seconds your burn is you burn however many seconds before the node. So in that sense, we had a 14 second burn. We burned at the 14 second mark and we were done when we hit the node. Either way, uh, you know, it, it gets you about there. It depends on, on how uh, detailed you really want to be. But now we are completely in orbit here. And uh, I'm gonna speed us up just a little bit uh, to get through the dark side. Um, and you can see coming up here, it's going to pop up in just a second, but uh, our retrograde indicator is going to come up on the uh, attitude indicator, which is right here. Basically, uh, it's a symbol that kind of looks like a bit like an airplane, but there's an X through the middle of the circle. And that means that's our retrograde. If we were to, if we wanted to go back into the atmosphere at this point, when we are matched up with this indicator, we would burn. And that would slow our orbital velocity down. Our orbit on the opposite side of the planet would go down to the point where our trajectory would go into the atmosphere, slow us down, uh, and then we would land. And hopefully we would have a means to do so, either parachutes or landing legs or something like that. Uh, the sun is coming up. Great view there. We are coming up into the day side of the planet again. Uh, one of my favorite things that have been added uh, recently when they've changed kind of the topography of Kerbin is this impact crater. I think that looks amazing. I am easily pleased. It's okay, you can say it, but I think it just looks cool. Uh, now that we're on the, right, or on the bright side of the planet, uh, I'm gonna put us into a prograde orientation so we're going to be basically facing forward in the direction we're flying like so and 
Once we're basically there, I'm going to separate us from the upper stage and the control uh, system here. So we're basically free flying. There we go. Separation's complete. That rocket is going off, and now we have a big ball in space. Yay us. Uh, so, that's a real quick, not actually not so quick introduction to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, here in the future, we're going to uh, kind of advance our, our space program to launching some communication satellites into orbit so that when we uh, start launching actual Kerbins into orbit, they can communicate with us at Mission Control. Um, I think kind of the logical step is to uh, just kind of progress with that. Eventually, we'll build a space station. We'll land on the moon. We'll go to Duna. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. And uh, in the middle of all that, we're going to be checking out some of the amazing, amazing uh, mods that people have come up with. I, I never cease to be amazed with some of the stuff that people do uh, to make this game even better than it already is. Uh, so hopefully you will come back uh, later and uh, kind of learn along with us. Um, that's going to be about it, guys. I will uh, see you soon when we put together another rocket and uh, start our great uh, orbital junkyard in the sky. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be well. I will uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.